Hi everyone, it's Tara. Welcome back to The Three Bookshelves. Today I'm going to be doing a brand new tag created by Jade at JD Ray Reads. She didn't actually mean to create it as a tag, but uh, it was a really cool concept for a video and I asked her if I could use that idea as well for a video of my own. And she gave me the thumbs up, so here we go. The tag is based on Pluchik's Wheel of Emotions, which asserts that there are eight basic human emotions. Joy, trust, fear, surprise, sadness, disgust, anger, and anticipation. I got them all. It's a few more than I remember being an Inside Out. And you have to choose a book that makes you feel each of those emotions. Without further ado, let's get right to it. For Joy, I chose Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling. I don't really need to tell you what this book is about, do I? No? Okay. So many parts of this book actually make me really sad. How Harry is treated by the Dursleys, how he lives in a tiny dusty cupboard under the stairs, how he witnesses Dudley growing up with all this love and attention and Harry gets none. And then there's the mirror of Erised. And then at the end where he leaves Hogwarts and his first friends and his the world that he belongs in to go back to that horrible, horrible life at the Dursleys. Ugh. But The Philosopher's Stone is arguably the happiest book in the Harry Potter series because it's when Harry discovers the wizarding world and discovers that there is more to his life than the really crappy life he's known so far. It's where he makes the first friends that he's ever had in his life and he gets to do magic and he gets to fly a broom. He just becomes this brand new person that he was never able to be. The Harry Potter series as a whole is my ultimate comfort object. Whenever I am feeling down, I reread Harry Potter and it immediately makes me feel better. It's it's better than a warm fuzzy blanket and a hot cup of tea. It's the absolute best thing to put a smile on my face. I even had the Philosopher's Stone movie playing while I was in labor to give me happy thoughts. The next wedge on the wheel of emotions is trust. And for trust, I chose Flowers in the Attic by V.C. Andrews, which I'm just gonna set right here so that it doesn't keep getting glare from the light. There we go. Are you good? Okay. Flowers in the Attic is a gothic horror classic published in 1979 and set in the 1950s, a bygone time where women were more likely to be housewives and have careers. When Corinne finds herself widowed with a ton of debt, four children to support, and zero employable skills, she begs her wealthy but estranged parents to help a girl out. Christopher, Kathy, Corey, and Carrie are smuggled into their grandparents' mansion in the middle of the night and locked into a single small bedroom because their grandmother insists that their grandfather and never find out that they even exist. Corinne promises her children that it will only take one night for her to win back her father's love and then she'll unlock the door and take them downstairs to live like kings and queens. But one night turns into one week, one week turns into one month, and eventually the kids discover that they'll be locked up until the day their grandfather dies. Flowers in the Attic is very possibly the first adult book I ever read. I took it off of my mother's bookshelf when I was, I think, 11. Uh, probably too young to read a book with that kind of subject matter, but I gobbled it up and it was my absolute favorite book for a long time after that. I've read it once a year for most of my life. I picked Flowers in the Attic for Trust because I know this book inside and out and every time I read it it is comforting because of that familiarity. It's kind of like hanging out with your lifelong best friend. No matter how many times I read Flowers in the Attic I can trust that I will love it every single time. And moving on down the wheel of emotions we come to fear and for fear I chose Small Great Things by Jodi Pico. Ruth Jefferson is an African-American labor and delivery nurse who is taken off off the care of a newborn after his white supremacist parents insist that only white people may touch their son. When the baby goes into cardiac distress and Ruth is the only person present, she hesitates to go against her orders and intervene. When the baby then tragically dies, Ruth is blamed and charged with murder. So many of Jodi Pico's books deal with the illness or trauma or death of a child, and it was hard to read before I was a mother, but now that I am a mother, it's even harder. Every parent's worst nightmare is to lose their child. So Jodi Pico's books hit really close to home now. This is really heavy, so I'm gonna stand this one up here too. Small Great Things was especially difficult for me to read because I read it only a few months after my son was born. And you can imagine how hard it is to read a book about a newborn baby dying right after you've had a baby. So Small Great Things is really the stuff of nightmares for me. I love Jodi Pico's books and I will continue to read every single one, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't terrified that it was just going to be another mother's worst nightmare. Next up we have Surprise. This was a very easy pick for me. Cinder by Marissa Meyer. Cinder is a cyborg living in New Beijing with her hateful stepmother and two stepsisters, 
until one of her stepsisters contracts a deadly plague, and Cinder's stepmother volunteers her to be a lab rat for the Crown's plague research. Cinder then discovers there's more to her cyborg side than she ever thought, and she gets tangled up with a conflict between Earth and Luna. I was really hesitant to read the series because it's YA, and I don't love YA. I tend to stay away from YA because I haven't had great experiences with it. But to read it I did, and while most of the plot was kind of predictable, what really surprised me was how much I loved this book. I could not wait to get to the next book, and then the next book, and then the next book. I was so in love with this series, and it shocked me that I could love a YA series so much. The Lunar Chronicles is now my third favorite series of all time, and it really opened my mind to reading more YA, because if I loved this series so much, who knows what other YA series I also might really, really love. Cinder was definitely a surprise, and one of the best surprises I've ever had. The next emotion is sadness, and my choice for sadness is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Because of course it is. The Fault in Our Stars follows two teenage cancer patients meeting and falling in love and going on the adventure of their lifetime until this is easily the saddest book I have ever read in my entire life. I remember reading this book just bawling and my face covered in tears and my husband walks into the room and takes one look at me and says, are you okay? No, 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 I was not okay. I was not okay. And then I saw the movie, which I thought I would be ready for because I'd read the book. But no, no, I cried even more watching the movie. Just, just, urgh. This story just reaches into your chest and pulls out your heart and it squishes it. I would love to read The Fault in Our Stars a second time, but I haven't because I've been too afraid to because it's just too sad. But for all the sadness, for all the heartbreak, it is one of the best books I've ever read. And I definitely recommend it to everybody if you haven't read it already. Just make sure you have a box of Kleenex handy. Moving on down the wheel, we come to Disgust. And for Disgust, I chose Haunted by Chuck Palahniuk. I don't actually have a copy of this right now because I lent it out and never got it back. Oops. Haunted is a collection of short stories written by a group of people who are on a writing retreat hoping to write their magnum opus, but once they realize that they are trapped, things take a deadly turn. I am not a squeamish person and I don't scare easily. I love horror. So when I heard one of the stories in Haunted, Guts had actually made a bunch of people faint at live readings, I knew that I had to read this book. Guts did not make me pass out, but it was definitely one of the most disgusting things I've ever read. There are actually two other parts of this book that disturbed me way more than Guts did. One is a short story called Hot Potting and the other is an incident involving a tattoo in one of the the interludes. Haunted was the first Chuck Palahniuk novel I ever read, and it is still to this day my favorite novel by him, despite or maybe because of how disgusting it is. The next emotion is anger. The blurb on the back of Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James claims that this is a book about a young woman, Anna, who meets a, what does it say? beautiful, brilliant, and intimidating man, Christian Grey, and then embarks on a daring, passionately physical affair. What this book actually is, is a case study in abusive relationships. I'm not talking about the BDSM elements. Any consensual BDSM relationship is not abusive. But the key word there is consensual. Very little about this relationship is consensual. Anna actually says multiple times, no, stop, she pushes him away, and he just keeps going. That's not BDSM. That is rape. But the physical abuse is nowhere near the level of emotional abuse that Christian inflicts on Anna by controlling her and gaslighting her and getting angry every time she goes to see a friend and making her feel like everything is her fault and making her feel like she is worthless and below him and doesn't deserve him and oh I can go on and on. This book is sick. It is sick because it disguises itself as a love story and this is not a love story. And any young impressionable woman who reads this and thinks this is a love story is probably going to get herself tied up with the type of man that Christian Grey is, the type of man that is going to control her and abuse her and treat her like shit. I swear to god, if you google signs that you are in an abusive relationship, Christian Grey will meet every single one of them. Aside from the subject matter of this book, it infuriates me because it is so badly written. I could have written something better than this when I was 10 years old and somehow this is a number one New York Times bestseller. How? Oh, I just, uh, this makes me see red. I really only read this because I had read some very bad reviews and I had formed opinions based on those reviews and people asked me, well, you can't have an opinion because you haven't read it yourself. So I read it. I actually live tweeted my reading of this. I will link that down in the doobly-doo if you are interested. I am not one for burning books, but if I could burn every single copy of the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy, I would reach for that lighter so fast. And lastly, we come to anticipation, and for that it was a no-brainer, The Winds of Winter by George R.R. R. Martin. 
we have been waiting on this book a very, very, very long time. Seven years, George, seven years. Well, actually it's only been six years for me because I only started reading the Song of Ice and Fire series in 2012, but seven years! The Winds of Winter is, or will be, the sixth book in the Song of Ice and Fire series, which you may be more familiar with as the basis for HBO's Game of Thrones. Even though the show officially surpassed the book storyline two seasons ago, Winds of Winter is probably still the most anticipated book in the world. I for one would happily trade every single book I own just to get Winds of Winter in my hands. And that's it for my bookish wheel of emotions. Do you agree with me? Do any of these books make you feel those feels? Let me know down in the comments. And now I get to tag people. First I will tag my friend Kaylee who is also pretty new to booktube. Her channel is the Enchanted Library. I will leave you a link down below. You should definitely check her out. I'd also like to tag Peter from Peter Likes Books who has said recently that he has done all the tags and he needs a new tag so here you go. Here's a new tag. And Caleb, the insane reader who is hilarious and I think could do really funny things with this tag. And that is all I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my bookish wheel of emotions and if you did please like the video and if you haven't yet subscribe. Until next time everybody, happy reading. Bye.